All right, this is JPEG to Raw, show number 112, Tim. Uh, and what's this, April 15th, tax day. Yeah, I sent out a, a check this morning, sadly, to the New York State taxes. It's amazing so, that I can get money back from federal, but I owe money for state. We're not going to bore our photographer friends with a bunch of tax stuff, which is boring even to accountants like me. Um, but I did have a question when you mentioned that. So you're, you're still writing out a check and filing it? For the paper? state tax. Okay. I think that's like one of the rare checks. I, if I send out 10 checks a year, yeah. and some of them are like birthday cards and stuff, I don't write checks for just about anything anymore. I don't know the last time I wrote a check. It's been a long time. But I did mine. I did mine uh, over the weekend. I hadn't filed it yet, even though uh, one of them, I think the net between federal and state, I come close to breaking even. I was expecting to get a little bit back, but I forgot about one little thing. <laughs> And, you know, that's sad that uh, the accountant forgot about one little thing. And that is, you know, the money that we've made from the, um, where is this? Money we've from made Amazon? from Amazon. Got to pay freaking tax on that. Really? So when you go out there and you use our, our code, which is, you know, jpaytoraw.com slash Amazon, uh, we get, a, the show gets a small credit. We give all that money back. So here's the, here's the thing for me. We have all that money back through uh, promotion, uh, through giveaways or through the photo challenge each month and all that kind of stuff. So we actually had a small little balance out there that, you know, to fund the monthly uh, challenge that we had going on and that kind of stuff, the photo challenge. If you're not in the photo challenge, uh, we host most of it in the Facebook group, but we kind of expanded it out now. So both of our, our Facebook group people and our Google Plus community people can both join the, the, the contest. A challenge. I keep saying contest, but it's a challenge. And also, you can go directly to our website and do it from there. But you got to use the code um, jpegdoraw.com slash Amazon. Just use that every time you go to Amazon, and we get a small credit and helps us fund that. Well, what I forgot was that was all well and good, but come tax day, I have to pay taxes on that. So <laughs> <laughs> um, that kind of wiped out what little balance we had left. And I end up owing, you know, some to the to the government. So I'll file my file mine tonight, and I do mine electronically. Well, I hope I did it right because I just bought a TV on Amazon last week, and I hope it appeared for you. You're that guy. Yes, it did. Yes. Good job. So, <laughs> so my I TV died the other day, and my wife's like, "We need a TV," and and surprisingly, Amazon had the best price. It's like, all right, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, search for your best price. I'm not telling you to go get a bad deal, but if you find if you're going to be using Amazon for TVs, it doesn't have to be photography stuff. Uh, you know, use that, and we'll get a small credit. Or in Tim's case, we probably got, you know, even something like a TV. We're not going to make hundreds of dollars. We're going to make still a small <laughs> amount, but that does help. Uh, but you know, on tax day, what I what I back in the days when I was shooting for a uh, soccer company, or there weren't a soccer company. I shot soccer. They were a sports photo people, whatever you call them. Um, I would make, you know, 25 bucks an hour, which was never going to support my family, but was good side money. And, um, you know, that kind of stuff that helped me fund my camera and buy a new, new gear and all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> it did, you know, I didn't have to pay tax on that. And one thing you got to be careful of as you, know, you come across this tax day is, is your photography business a hobby or is it a uh, business? I think a lot of us, a lot of people like to think that they're going into photography for, to run a business, but there's certain IRS rules on whether it is a business or it is a hobby. If it's a hobby, you're not going to be able to deduct those expenses. You know, you, you're going to have to, uh, or there's, it's much harder to deduct those expenses. Uh, I'm not going to give you tax advice. You need to go see a professional about that. But, um, it made me think, you know, when you do your tax return and you look at that, and if you did not make enough to cover all your expenses, then it probably is a hobby. Yeah, I'm definitely way into the hobby side. I'm not making anything on my, my uh, photography. Well, you know, I think, I think some people, you know, would like to do this as a full-time job. And, you know, you, you can, obviously. Lots of people make a lot of money off this. But what you got to be careful of i think the irs rules are you got to make a profit you know two or three years out of every five and i got a little web page here and i can put it in the chat or put it in the show notes um i'll do that and it's an older article but it's still it's still pretty good it talks about how you you know you need to be keeping your books you need to be have a goal of a profit 
And if you just made a small profit, so let's say you you brought in twenty grand worth of revenue, you you know you worked had clients, you had twenty grand worth of revenue, minus your expenses, whatever they may be. Let's say they were really mm-hmm. good and they were only five thousand dollars in expenses, um, then you only paid yourself fifteen thousand dollars for the year, and that is you're not you're not even going to support yourself. You go work at Publix and make more than that. So you know, think about it. It it. I had thought about when I was doing it, and I had I had dreams of eventually turning what I was doing into a into a business and being able to do more um, with that. But ultimately, I I said, you know, forget it. I'm I'm just I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep this as a hobby. It made made my taxes a lot simpler, and maybe not have to worry about eventually getting an audit or anything like that. But it's a good time to do some reflection on tax day as to whether uh, you want to take this to the next level. If you do. If you want to take it to the next level and you barely made a profit, then you need to look at what you can do to, to make it better. So that's, right. that is my preaching here on tax day. I'm not going to get into the politics of taxes or uh, anything like that. I do use TurboTax, and I recommend TurboTax. That's worked really well for me. Do you, uh, did you drop that into our chat? Oh, I did not, but I uh, will try to here. No, I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> here, let me... <laughs> Let me put it in the show notes, and then you can, um, you then you can put it out there. There you go. All right. So the next thing we're going to do the photo challenge stuff later on in the show. Okay. Uh, okay. I did want to mention on the live show because we had the pre-show. Now we're in the live show. This will be the part that is, re- part that is recorded and goes out and everywhere. Uh, a company, a guy named Mike Wren from Photosmith texted me through uh, through uh, Twitter right before the show. I had put out that we're about to go live. Mike texted me and said, hey, take a look at, at Photosmith. I have not looked at it before. I don't have an iPad, um, but I do use Lightroom, and I know a lot of our the people who listen to the show or, or, or view the show, whatever. I guess everybody listens to the show, whether you're viewing it or get the audio or video. Either way, you listen. Right, Tim? That is correct. So I can say... People who listen to the show, a lot of our people who listen to the show, uh, or iPad, use an iPad or some type of um, Apple device like that. So this is a, an interesting device that they uh, program they may be interested in. And Mike is going to give us a promo code for it. I'll contact him within the next day or so. And we're going to maybe even talk about having Mike come on later. But I just wanted to do a little shout out to Mike. Uh, very nice looking website. Whoever did a website did a great job. And, it, and a very interesting looking program. Um, Tim, you said well, you have I, actually I did, used I it before. Used it. I used it previously. Uh, so tell us a little uh, bit about what it does, and then we'll go on to the next subject. Well, it, it's a very gr- good companion to, to Lightroom, and, and I guess really what it what it comes down to is you can download from your card into the iPad your your pictures, and then using a Lightroom type interface, you can uh, do tagging um, to the pictures. You could uh, put uh, metadata into it this way. And then you can sync it up to your computer later on. So it's a way of if you're out on the road or let's say you're on vacation and you want to start putting tags on your pictures, you can do it. And it syncs right back and forth, both sides to uh, to Lightroom. And uh, one thing they've, they've really done a lot with is uh, there's a lot of cameras that, and this was probably the biggest issue they had at the beginning. You think about every camera out there has a different format. They had to make sure every format worked with the program. So there's hundreds of camera formats that are working and and that's when you real i think that's probably when i went up going over to adobe dng also because you realize how many different uh, formats are out there for files and uh they're covering it and and i do like the fact that you can upload your pictures to your ipad and then uh edit it right there so especially when you're away on vacation or out on the road then when you get back to your your house it'll sync right over to uh to the lightroom app transfer the pictures over to it uh one of the things that i, I had uh, hoped and i know they were trying to uh to get in, into, and uh, I think we'll have to ask Mike about it, was I think it was the uh, Seagate drives had the, the uh, I think it was a, a wireless connection to the iPad, because if you think about it, your iPad only has at max, well, I think now they're up to 128 gigs, up to 64 gigs of s- storage. So you can max and that out really that, easy. So you can max that, max that out real quick. If you're using a 32 gig card, you can max it out. But they were trying to work with Seagate to get it to work with uh, their hard drive. But I, I know at the beginning they were having an issue with it and they were trying to work through that with uh, Seagate. So they, they definitely have uh, the feelers out. Uh, the program is absolutely wonderful. 
Uh, I, I think we're going to talk about the Lightroom app that just came out, and it is definitely different. They actually commented about it on their uh, their blog the other day because people asked about it, and, and I have to agree. It's two totally different things. Lightroom app does not do what Photosmith app does, at least not at this point. Well, and uh, that I love the fact that you can start tagging on the road because uh, tagging, you know, as you start building up a big database of images, being having not tagged them in the past as religiously as I wish I had, I start to you start to regret it. You know, little things like my son graduating from from high school coming up, and he just he got finished with his swim team season not too long ago, and they had said, "Hey, get ten photos over the you know course of their life and and of them swimming and doing that kind of stuff." That would have been so much easier had I have been religious about tagging from the beginning. So being able to tag while you're out there on vacation, uh, on vacation or remote, whatever it is. One thing I wish they would do, and I'll say it again with Lightroom too, is you know not everybody owns an iPad. I have an Android tablet. Well, suppose and that they're going to come out with a an Android. Well, I think next one they're going to do is a, a, a iPhone app and then a Android app and then a Windows Phone app is what they're saying. But I mean, they, they, this is painfully slow by them. Yeah, I, I, have, I have a Nexus Seven. Oh, matter of fact, I don't even use my iPad anymore. I gave it to my my 21 month old daughter. She uses it. I, I use my Nexus Seven because it fits in my back pocket. It's easier to use. So, yeah. Um, so wait, who's going to come out with an Android app? Lightroom. Oh, I was talking about Photosmith. Oh, but, photo, yeah, Photosmith. Is, Photosmith and and I, I don't think they are that way. Okay, Photosmith and Lightroom. I wish they'd come out with an Android app because you know the, the there's. There's a whole bunch of marketing hype about Retina. This tablet right here, which is an Android tablet, has more resolution than a Retina tablet. So Retina is just a marketing hype. It's not some magic. Um, but I understand that, you know, Apple still corners the market on tablets. But uh, it, it is a it, that, that the world is opening up, and hopefully, you know, we'll get more. Well, I think the, the reason apps. I always hear on that is you, you think about the iPad; it's one resolution. So it's got so many tablets out there, but it's all pretty much the same resolution. So it's easier than a, an Android app, which is a seven inch, an eight inch, a ten inch. Or, that, that's very true. So and that's that's a pretty issue they've always had with it. The, the one thing with with Apple, because they make all the hardware and the software, is you don't have twelve different you know ten inch tablets, or you know. 12 different sizes between 5 inch and 12 and 10 inch. Heck, there's even now a 12 inch Sam, uh, yeah, Samsung Galaxy tablet, which is just crazy. So you're right. There's not near the, um, what do you call it? Um, Ease of uh, developing. Conformity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And in conformity with there with the uh, Android side of it is, is with Apple. There is some benefit in controlling the whole, the whole market uh, thing there. So that was Photosmith. We'll we'll talk more about that down the road. It looks very interesting, and I will once I after I talk to Mike, I'll put something out in our Facebook group and uh, our Facebook page and give you more information on that. But tonight we want to talk about um, Lightroom, the mobile version. This is the first mobile app they've come up with, right, Tim? That yeah, I know they've been talking about it for a long time, and uh, nothing had been done. I think. At least two or three years, people have been asking for something for Lightroom, and they haven't done anything. So finally, they came out with a mobile app. Matter of fact, I didn't even know it was coming out. I just saw it come across uh, my phone last week, and I was like, what? They finally uh, developed an app for it. Uh, right now, it is iPad only. Um, once again, another app that is developed just for the iPad. And, and the way it works, you had to upgrade to photo, uh, Lightroom 5.4. And within 5.4, it connects to their, their cloud service, which is what you actually need. You, you need to have uh, access to their cloud service because what you do is you have one of the collections on the, on the left side of your screen in, in the Lightroom library, and there's a, a little arrow to the left of it. And within that, you can sync that collection to the cloud, to the, to the Adobe Cloud. Then when you go into the, photo, uh, the Lightroom app on your iPad, instantly the pictures are right up there. And then what's really, really good about it is, well, you know what, what they want to do with it and what people are really going to do with it are probably two different things. I, I'm disappointed they didn't put in tagging into the, uh, into the Lightroom app. Right now it is only uh, allows you to, and, and I'm going to look at the app. So there's, so that no, I, uh, there's no tagging? No, no tagging in it, which is really a major mistake. Can we go back to the, you said the, um, the syncing with the cloud. You got. Yeah, I got to have a cloud service. You got to have Creative Cloud. So I think you you almost have to have. Now I have the. Wait, uh, wait, wait. So you have to have the, you have to have Creative Cloud. 
you have to have either you have to pay for some sort of service from Lightroom. So since I have the ten dollar per month Lightroom Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud, I have storage space up there. Okay. So you would have it as well because you have the uh, I think you have the full Adobe Suite uh, Cloud, correct? I do. Yeah. So you would have access to that. So I know I've, I've seen people say that if you don't have that, you can't use it. Now, I, I have it, so I, I can't verify that. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's based on the way this is working. You're actually syncing the, the, uh, the preview from Lightroom up to the cloud. So you're not syncing the entire picture. It's the smaller version that gets synced up to the cloud. When you go into your iPad, into the app, and you sign into it, everything that you have in that collection is synced directly to your iPad. Okay. So it's a nice smooth transition between the two. So if I if I'm someone who bought Lightroom outright, so I don't have Creative Cloud, I don't have that what was the photo photographers collection which was a, a Photoshop and Lightroom where you can get for like 9.99 a month or something like that. If I don't have either one of those, I'm going to have to buy a cloud um, subscription or, as far as you know, correct. a cloud subscription to from from Adobe. That's correct. Okay. And but, I know that was some of the complaints from people, but uh, see, and, and I mean, when when they came out with the 9.99 for Photoshop and Lightroom, that was, it, it really was more than cheap enough for me to say, all right, this is something I do want. So if if I so I have a collection on my desktop or my laptop or whatever it is, and then I have the the app on my I, iPad. And I can sync them through the cloud, but I'm not syncing full size files. I'm syncing right, maybe syncing smart, the previews. smart previews, something like that. Right. What can I then do editing on the iPad? Yeah, you can you can do editing, and some of the things that you can do with it is, uh, so I, I got my iPad right here, and I got a picture of my. I don't know if you can see this picture. A picture of my daughter up there right now. Let me lock so in you on you gotta, first too. You, you got on the bottom. You can change all your exposures, whether it's white balance. The tint to it, the uh, exposure, you can change. Lift um, it up just a tad because your lower third's covered up. There you go. Sorry. You have all filters that you can add to it. And then the third one in there they have right now is you can, you can change the crop of the picture. So that's really what the limit is of it. And, and I, I think the question some people are saying is, is this something you're going to do on your iPad? Are you going to make any really – major edits to the oh and the other thing you can do is uh and, and this is what we did the reason i had these pictures up here we were trying to do... oh you just cut out i don't hear you anymore can you no, hear me now yep, i can yep uh, what we're going to do with my daughter's pictures is from her first year we're going to create a book so i took I, I think i probably uploaded into the uh collection about 500 pictures from the first year and then you can do picks and rejects out of that easily so the the good thing about it is as soon as you make the edit on the iPad, it instantly transfers over to Lightroom. So it's not like you have to wait a while. The transfer rate of it is instant. The the only really bad thing that I see is you can't do any tagging, which is probably what I would have done mostly with the app. I would like to have seen it where you can add tags into it to the picture. So if you're sitting in front of TV and you want to add all the tabs, tags that you have, it would be easy. Um, is somebody going to do some uh, critical color corrections on your iPad. You know, I don't know if that's uh, what somebody's going to do. Uh, I, I think the iPad's color is pretty good, but it is, is it totally photo accurate that I'm going to say this is what I'm going to want to print in the, fu in the future? I don't know about it. It what? does have the histogram in there, so you can do the exposure on there, which is nice. So maybe you can do some, some light editing. Uh, what about all your presets and all that kind of stuff that you have in Lightroom? No, I didn't see any of the presets in there. Okay. Can you create some of your own from the iPad or is it just not no, possible to no, have there's nothing in there that you can do with that okay well what what about this um, Nikki I mean uh, Gina says surely this can't be used for client images however if let's say you create a, um, a a collection or whatever it is of the client images they would sync and at least you could show do the, do the images well, look do the images look good on on the tablet do they, even though you're yeah, looking at just a look, preview I mean I, I don't know uh, I mean, well, I, we're, hold on. Let me, the iPad. let me lock on you. It's, I'm not going to be able to tell because you know we're video streaming, but it, right. I mean it looks okay. Cute, cute dog. I mean the, the picture looks great. It looks just as good as what would it be on my computer screen. Okay. To be honest with you. Does it does it transfer it's over been, all the? It's not a retina version either. So. Does it transfer over all like your um, smart collections and all that kind of stuff? 
as long as you check it off, all these smart collections would go over. But you'd have to, in, in a Lightroom, on the left-hand side of the collection, there's a new uh, little arrow. You just uh, click on it, and it automatically will will uh, sync that collection. Okay, so so you have a um, your catalog, and you may have a, um, a, a senior sheet or something like that, and you put out there you know, uh, in this smart collection or whatever collection it is underneath there, the, the images, and you can sync it then to your iPad. And I guess that could be used in that s standpoint. You could use it like that. Gina does ask a follow-up question. What market is this targeted for? Um, how, how much was the app? It's free. The app oh. is free. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess it's, it's hard Anybody to Anybody that owns Lightroom. <laughs> I guess it's hard to complain about a product that's free too much, but... Uh, so, so Gina, I guess the answer there is anybody who owns Lightroom and an iPad is who it's targeted to. Who's actually going to use it? Heck, you know, fr free. So, uh, and Mike Ren says smart collections don't sync. Right. I was just looking. I was just going to say that it's just the collections that you create. So this, and I, because I, I wasn't sure on that. So none of the smart collections that you have in there, but any of my other collections would sync. There is no checkbox next to the other ones. Okay. I guess as long as you know that going in. That's okay. Um, I, I you know is, I think it's anybody who has an iPad and Lightroom is is who it's targeted for. So with it being free, who's going to use it? I you know heck why not? If you have an iPad, why not download it and, and check it out? I, wish I mean I think the uh, the the point of if you're going to show it off as a as a collection to people and you have let's say 50 pictures in there and you want to pick and choose which ones you like, yet you know what you can go through the pictures real easily sitting on a couch and say all right these are the ones I like. Yeah. Now you I don't think you could send this uh, collection to anybody. You actually have to sign into the app, so you'd have to give your credentials from Lightroom. So you're not going to give that to anybody. That's going to be on your iPad and that's it. Timothy Foster had a great point. We keep saying free, that the app is free and all that kind of stuff. But to actually use it, you're going to have to have, you have, a, to have the Creative Cloud. Yeah, to have that Creative Cloud su subscription or one of the on Adobe Online um, storage somehow, which I don't know if I, I don't know if you can get that outside of uh, being a Creative Cloud member. Maybe you can, but either way, you're going you're gonna to have to pay for it. Um, so so it's not totally free. If you're already a Creative Cloud member. Or the nine 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 ninety nine a month subscription, which is Photoshop and Lightroom, I believe, then you you get that online stuff for free. Um, how much room does it take up? Because that that's not an unlimited storage on, on the online uh, cloud. You know, let me see if I could see how much uh, storage it's taken up from the. Because uh, I have five hundred or about four hundred pictures uh, synced up to it, so I could probably see what the app is taking up right now. Because you know if it if if it's not taking up that much. I don't know. You look at my smart collections on my hard drive. Holy moly, they're taking up a, a lot more room than I thought. And I have that on SSD. So I was looking at the other day, and I thought it was something like 14 gig. It was massive. And they, I, what do they give you? 20 gig? I can't remember. It's not something like that. Yeah, it's not a heck of a lot, especially. Not, uh, yeah. But I guess if they're using the smart or the uh, smart previews, that shouldn't be taking up a heck of a lot. Those. And Mike, so it's still calculating. Uh, Mike Ren says smart collections are a pain to sync. Um, yes. I guess the way it's, it it actually works, it must be a, a pain. Uh, for the four hundred pictures that I have in there, it's taken up one hundred and six megabytes, so that's nothing. But that's only four hundred. I guess you know how many photos you're going to put on your iPad. Yeah, so. you're not going to put everything up there. All right, so that's 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 understandable. Um, what about? Uh, can you flag? Um, can you use it? Call, actually, it's, call actually the uh, it's for for the documents and data. It's forty six megabytes, sixty megabytes for the app itself. So, okay, okay, so not bad. Can can you um, uh, you know, do some culling with images? Can you flag them? Yeah, that's what you can do. You can do pick and rejects. So if you upload, a, let's say you do a whole shoot and you want to just go through quickly through the pictures. It'll show. Uh, then you, you pick reject by drawing up and down, and then once you get to your Lightroom, you, you can actually reject, the, delete all the rejected photos right then and there. Okay, so that's good. So and maybe I, I, I need to make sure I understand this because, you know, with all these monitors here, I get distracted a lot. So you may have already said this, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know that that, that what was that cartoon where the dog goes squirrel. I feel like that all the time. So anyway. <laughs> I can sync from the from the desktop or laptop to the iPad. Correct. Right? 
So it means that I got to shoot. I got to download through them. Creative, through the Creative Cloud. Right. I got to shoot. I got to download them on the PC or the laptop, and that will sync to the to the iPad. Can I go? Once the, you put it into a collection. Once you put you it in a collection. Got to put it into a separate collection, not in the in the file section. You put it into a collection. Click off a, a checkbox to the left of that, and that would automatically sync then to the iPad. But I can't go the other way. I can't. I don't think. No, I don't think you can do it that way. That the Photosmith app that we talked about early, you it can do download it. it to your iPad and then syncs back to. So you're you're not able to do this on the road then. Is is your question? I so, don't think you can at least. All right, Gina. I just found a target market for this. You ready? So because you, in, in this case, to really to use it on the iPad, you first have to have put it on your laptop or your desktop, w meaning that you know if you wanted to call the images, you're already sitting right there to call them. But something's, something's happened, you're busy, you need to download them and then go somewhere else, and then you can call them off you know, from your iPad. And Gina, this is where, this is the target market, or a target market. You download them onto your PC or laptop, and then you take your iPad to the bathroom. <laughs> it's a guy. <laughs> and while you're in there, you call your images. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, I, I don't, you know, I, I mean, without the tagging, it's going to be limited use to me, I think. Um, that, that's where the, the other app would be better for me. Because uh, uh, at that point, once I upload it to the computer, I'm doing all my work right then and there anyway. Uh, I, I mean, when I download the pictures, I'm putting tags in right away. I'm not waiting a week or two later. Because if I don't, like I took pictures of the soccer game this weekend, if I don't put the names in right away, I'm not doing it. I already know it. Yeah. And, and I got to imagine that's most people. Yeah. So Nikki's saying uh, she did a shoot, and at the end of the shoot, she asked the 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 person uh, the the, <laughs> the 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 I'm reading chat here, so I'm getting distracted again. Squirrel <laughs> <laughs> asked asked the client to go through it and X the ones that she did she absolutely hated, and then press five for anything that she absolutely loved. Worked awesome because I could go through and edit what she loved first. So that was a way for right there, but she did it on a laptop. Um, yeah, I guess the other thing is, so let's say you 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 know you, you could then you know download them here, and you can I said toilet, but you could be anywhere else. You can take your iPad with you, and then and then do the calling somewhere else. You know, you you whatever activity you're going on. Um, heck, I guess you could do it while you dr you're driving down the road if you're the passenger, um, something like that. So <laughs> there's there's some other ways, but. Um, it does sound like it's very limited. Now, one thing on the culling, that the way I have mine set up, is when I press flag or, or star or anything like that, anything to mark the image, it auto advances to the next image. Does it does it work that way on the iPad? Uh, or maybe you don't know. You can try it right now. I can try it right now. See what it see what it does when I'm in it. I, I, I want to say it did, but uh, so let's see. Pick. Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller says bonds with an yeah, iPad. It's, it stays. Uh, same way, when it doesn't auto advance. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to go to the next one then. I mean, I, I think what the uh, That's in be regards a long to the iPad, visit. <laughs> I think the good thing about it is, it, uh, you can take pictures with you very easily as a as a almost as a catalog of all your pictures. Like you want to show pictures to people, like oh, this is the pictures of my daughter. This is a picture of the soccer game. It's very easy. Once you have Lightroom, it's a nice photo collection you can carry with you. Because uploading pictures to a tablet is not always the easiest thing. This is yeah. very easy to have it with you at any time. Then you put it in a collection, you click off a checkbox, you have it. Am I going to do uh, any uh, edits on there to just exposure? You know what? I'm probably going to do that while I sit at my computer. More than likely, I would think. Yeah, I, and I, and I know you just got this, so I'm asking you a lot of questions, and, you, and I'm impressed by how much you already know about this because you haven't had a lot of time to work with it. So maybe there's some kind of um, setting or something to do to auto advance. Without the auto advance, that makes the, the culling uh, a lot more difficult. If anybody out there is listening, probably not in our, our chat live chat here because all these guys are pretty experienced, but if you're listening to the show recorded and you're not using auto advance in Lightroom, uh, it just makes it so much easier. When you hit that button, it auto advances to the next image. Um, however you're flagging or starring or whatever method you're using makes it so much easier. And and not having that on the iPad uh, Lightroom app is, is a big omission if they don't have it. Yes, I agree. Uh, I mean, I you, you, you got to th you gotta think that Adobe has been creating this app for quite a while. It, it almost seems like it's a, uh, a 1.0, very 1.0 version. And, and uh, I mean, 
you, you know what people use Lightroom for, and I, I think the powerful part of Lightroom is the tagging. That's one of the, the – I mean, they've made it more powerful now with the editing, which they didn't have uh, over the years, and it's gotten more Photoshop-like to the point where I don't even go into Photoshop a lot. But the tagging is one of the really – big things in Lightroom, in, in my, or at least for what I use it for, it's for catalog, catalog, cataloging. And, and you can't do that, which is something where it would have been nice to have it. You, you upload the pictures, then you, if you go somewhere, you can uh, sync it to your iPad, and you can start adding tags. Now, will they add that in the future? I, I got to imagine they will. Uh, I can't imagine it's too difficult to add that in, but... Yeah, you know, so one of the things, uh, you know, probably know that I in my daytime job I'm um, a controller for a, a large company which is like the head bean counter but also the other side of what <laughs> I do is I'm um, C, CIO I guess is what it is chief um, information officer and over the, tech, over the technology group and I can tell you nothing what software is as easy as you would think it would be so no, you know, no. while this app doesn't do everything we wanted to do uh, we talked with Mike Ren about Photosmith it seems to do a lot of other things including the tagging um, none of these things are easy to program. So what, and I was, I was giving them some heck earlier about not having an iPad uh, or an Android um, application. But, you know, we talked about why, the, the fragmentation of, of Android and how that makes it more difficult for that. And I guess as an end user, I didn't really care. I just wanted it for my Android <laughs> tablet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, you got to look at, you know, when you look at Android, um, the fragmentation means each one of those fragment, fragments is, is almost kind of a market to its own in some case. And, 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 and segmented out like that, they're not as big as the Apple um, market, which is just more of a one big one. So... Um, I'm now I'm now staring at chat. <laughs> yeah. So no, chat chat is more active than uh, with with not as many people as we normally have, but it's more active than ever. There's a lot of good chat going on. If you're not watching us live, it's one of the good great reasons to come out live is because of the the great conversation in chat. So um, I imagine they talked about this. I saw it somewhere. Somebody Stephen said not raw. Uh, imagine what if it's if it's syncing only to smart previews or previews of any kind. It Th that's is not, right. It's, it it says raw. it's uh, meant to be uh, JPEGs only. But uh, I, I know I have uh, the fixtures I have, and they're all DNGs, which is uh, Adobe's format. So that that is another thing. Good point, Stephen. I didn't think of that. Uh, it's not syncing the raw files. So you you. And, and, you know, I don't upload uh, JPEGs at all, I, or I almost never take JPEG. I take everything in RAW, which, once again, that's something that Adobe is very good with. But yeah. now I don't think it's syncing the RAW photos to the, the Lightroom mobile. So that's another, another negative for it, because you got to think the professional is probably shooting in, actually, I think probably 90% of the people that we've interviewed are shooting in RAW. We've had a couple exceptions that have been shooting in JPEG. Yeah. But, uh I, I do convert all my RAWs into the Adobe's DNG digital negative format, and they did upload into into their app, which I, I would at least hope they would do that. Yeah. Um, so, the, but it, I think all of the previews, the smart previews, even if it's of a raw image or a DNG image, it is a, a JPEG. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. So I think I think what what's happened there. I don't know. I'd have to go and look at it. But I think what's happening when they create a smart preview, they're creating some kind of compressed uh, raw image. Because, you you know, especially with the new smart previews, which I think came out with Lightroom 5, uh, you can do edits on them and all, all those kind of things, even when you're not working on the actual image. So that's probably what's happening with this. You're working on a smart preview. And I, 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 my understanding is what it's doing is it knows the coordinates of the image. And if you do it this uh, these pixels make this change. It just records right. that data. It's really just a big database. It, yeah, it records that data in this database. So that when you go back, when it syncs back to your Lightroom, uh, you know, on your PC or laptop, it knows that in this quadrant or whatever it's however it's doing that, that you made this edit and it just applies it onto the the, the raw image in its database. It doesn't actually edit the raw image. So that's why you can edit those smart previews. Okay, you knew a little bit more about that than I did. At least I talked like I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my understanding and guessing that's of what's going on there. If if I'm wrong, let me know. Um, so okay, so how when did you get the the app? Uh, I think it only came out Friday last week, so or, or Thursday or Friday last week. So I dabbled with it over the uh, over the weekend after I took some uh, pictures. Okay. Well, as as time goes on, maybe you know you keep us up to date on what's happening with that. And um, 
you know, let us know if any updates come out or any new findings you have on, on that app. And okay. we'll, we'll, I'll reach out to Mike at, at some point and see if we can get him to come on the show and talk about Photosmith. And I, I need to reach out to him anyway to, to see about the promo code for people. Right. I already uh, I am him in the uh, in chat saying we need him on the show because I, I need a refresher on uh, uh, on Photosmith app as well. So and I, I think it is probably more powerful than the Lightroom Mobile is at the current current state of Lightroom Mobile. Yeah. And, and Mike knows. Uh, so like he knows a lot. Not me, Mike. Mike Wren, who's out in chat, knows a lot about the, the workings of Lightroom and his job at Photosmith. So he's saying um, smart previews are a max res of 20, 2,540 pixels with two sizes of smaller reference embedded JPEGs. Uh, Steven says, I wonder if I should just get the subscription. So, Steven, if you're not already in Adobe, uh, I don't know how you got Lightroom or Photoshop, but if you're not a Creative Cloud subscriber, even at nine ninety nine a month uh, for Photoshop and Lightroom, that I think is a great deal. You know, yeah, you, when they came out with that deal, that was uh, it was a no brainer. Considering you can never buy Lightroom, I mean, Photoshop outright again, you can still buy Lightroom, but you can never buy Photoshop outright again, and so this is the only way to get it. Because uh, uh, I don't like the subscription model to begin with, and paying a monthly thing is not something I'm I'm all happy about. It seems to be everything's going to a monthly fee, and pretty soon yeah. it's going to eat up everything we got. But you have no choice if you want Photoshop. So if you're going to do that anyway, and you don't have you don't have a need for all those other things in the full Creative Cloud, like Adobe Premiere, or Adobe uh, Edition, or uh, After Effects, or anything like that, then the nine ninety nine a month. For Photoshop and Lightroom, I think is a good deal, and I, I if I think that um, you're going to probably spend close to that if you're a regular update if you regularly update. Although you say you have CS5, so you may not have um, you may not be one that updates every every month. What's what's happening, Tim? Fell off a truck. He said he, he got Lightroom five when it fell off a truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Okay, there are ways to get it even cheaper than the nine ninety nine a month, but I'm not going to go into those. Those aren't necessarily. Well, legal. you used to always get like the student discounts on everything, and it was, uh, it was, it was cheap that way. But uh, yeah, you're right. If you can't get Photoshop anymore, I mean, really, once they came out with the nine ninety nine for Photoshop and Lightroom, or Lightroom, whatever edition it's going to be, that was just a no brainer to me. Plus, now you get the Creative Cloud, so you can store some of the pictures up there. Yeah. Okay, I need to put. Uh, oh, you already put the Photosmith thing in the show notes, right? Yes. All right. Well, yes, I, just, I did. It's already in there. You can. You don't need that. Uh, I know you can delete it out. All right. So <laughs> the, the 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 next thing we have to go over is the 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 March contest challenge. I get that wrong every time. <laughs> the March challenge. So everybody out in chat already knows this, but I'll say it for the people who are are listening afterwards. That is the. The larger pool, you know, I love doing the live show, but the majority of people who listen or, or, or view this after the fact in the recorded version. If you want to be in the monthly photo challenge and we have a different theme each month, you can come in through the Facebook group, which is just facebook.com slash groups slash JPEG to Raw. You can come in through our community on Google Plus. Just search for JPEG to Raw in the community section of Google Plus. Or you can go out to the web page. Um, out on the web page, I'll see. I'll see if I can pull it up here. Yeah, so out on the web page, we have photo challenge, and as it pulls up, you just come in here. You can upload your photo right here. It is anonymous, so no one will know who you know who it was that submitted that photo, and you can do it that way. So now there's three different ways. If you don't want to be part of a group on Facebook or Google Plus, three different ways you can do that, and and enter the challenge. We had somebody. Last month, who did enter that way, who entered through the the, um, the thing on the website. But what we do now, instead, we used to do it where we used to do um, uh, likes, based upon likes. People who made it into the finals were people who got the most likes in Facebook. So we decided as, a, as we keep growing and getting bigger that the better way to do this is to have the admins, which it is Tim, uh, Seth White, Gina Perry, and Nikki, who's out in in chat right now, Gina and Nikki are out in chat. What was that? And we all, and the previous month's winner, which last month was Matt Woodhouse. We all vote on who we want, uh, who we like the best. We get to pick three, 
and the three with the most who are picked the most then make it to the finals. And then the admins do a detailed vote based on five different criteria and a ranking scale in each criteria between one and ten. And the, the photo with the most number of the most points then wins. And Tim, I don't know about you, but it's interesting to see how people vote. There's a lot more detail on this. You know, yeah, I, I like it much better this way. This way you get to choose, you know, based upon technical, based upon emotion, based upon how they fit into the, the, the challenge that month. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot of information. Uh, and, you, you know, nobody makes it to 100% on any of it. But I, before we go into the finalist, I wanted to, to just quickly show some of the images that were in the challenge. Because not all, what happens a lot to me is the ones that I vote for in the first round don't make it to the finals. And there were several that I, I liked that didn't make it to the finals. And I'm just going to pull those out um, I'm partial to dogs, so I love this one. I don't know if I ended up voting for it or not. But this one's by Jane uh, Goobleman, I think is the name. I like That was a really good one. That one's by Jeannie. Um, I don't want to name each one of these, so that one's by Neil. But one of them that confused me at first, and it's just it's because of me, and you think that the theme was The Simple Life, and this was by Gina, who's out there in chat right now. When I first looked at this, I go, what? I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't catch it until after I looked at it for a second. And then I realized what was going on. And if you look at it from the perspective of the baby, uh, and this one's by Gina Perry, if I haven't said it already. You look at it from the perspective of the baby, it doesn't get any simpler than this. You know what I'm saying, Tim? Yeah, I, hold on, I was just reading something else. <laughs> You're distracted. You're distracted by... Um, rack it again. <laughs> Yes, Squirrel. yes, I like this picture. I do too. So uh, I, it, it did not make it into the finals. Sorry, Gina, but uh, I did want to give it a special shout out and everybody who joined, who entered the challenge this month. There were a lot of great photos. It does make picking the winner uh, difficult. All right, so let's get into the finals. The people who did make it to the finals, and first up is Matt Woodhouse again. So since Matt one last month and he did get to vote on who made it to the finals he had to pick four images because he could vote for his own but then he has to vote for another one but since it made it to the finals he could not vote in the finals so it was only us admins who got the vote first month that a previous winner could vote and matt couldn't vote because he made it into the finals um some of the comments on matt's photo i, I don't know if you have those up or want to read any of them tim let me see if i can uh, pull yeah, them up I, here I, do I have it up? I'm going to have to zoom uh, in because the text is so small. Yeah, really. Fits the theme perfectly. Great color in the image. Um, absolutely love the image. The Simple Life. Can't think of anything else that would demonstrate the theme more. Very simple stone cottage. No complications of technology. Perfectly done. Uh, the image is uh, strong use of theme. Good idea. Composition uh, comment was that maybe it shouldn't have been dead center of everything. I guess that was uh, along the rule of thirds. But overall, uh, a lot of things with the theme. It's the simple life. Great, great fitting to the theme. Yeah. Yep. No, very good. It was a great, great good image, uh, Matt. And next up, uh, let me get this ready, is Dean Stone. And Dean was out there. Yeah, Dean's still out there. Dean Stone with the boy... Uh, who's got a slipper. It looks like a fountain. He is a black and white. Uh, he's sitting there on the edge of the fountain, and had, his slippers are floating by. And maybe this is the boy in me, um, because, you know, I just turned, well, I just turned 21. <laughs> uh, so I, it wasn't that long ago that I was this age, because he looks like he's between 8 and eight and 10, something like that. Um, man, life was so simple back then. Just think how simple life was as a little boy when... You can take the time to just toss your slippers and your sandals into the fountain and watch them go by. And no concerns about the world, you know, and no worries about about anything. Your parents take care of everything. You know, I I love this shot from the how it fit to the theme. Some of the comments about this shot, if make sure I got this in the right order. Nope, I don't. Um very good use of the theme and great composition. Shot also brings back some memories of childhood. That And that wasn't my comment. That was somebody else's. Um, life was so simple back then. Having 
I already mentioned that. Love the, the contrast in the photo. Great black and white conversion. And, um, yeah, about everybody kind of has... I like Stone Boy at heart. Yeah. Sure. Kind of same, it's kind of the same thought as me and what I was saying with that one. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, absolutely. I, I mean, I look at my son who's 12 years old and I think about it. I mean, the the simple life. I mean, granted, it's I don't know if it's as simple as we had it back in uh, our day. But then again, we walked uphill both ways to school. So, uh, <laughs> well, in the father of two boys, I, I, you know, not too far off from heck, their life was still pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, but, really. <laughs> but it really was back then. And uh, the good black and white conversion, too. And another if I remember correctly, quite a few are black and white pictures. Actually, I think. Yeah, this next one is black and white also, and, and a number of them that were submitted in total were. So this one's by Gordon Ruff. Am I saying that right? Ru- I thought it was Ruth. Ruth. Ruff is so much better because it's a dog shot. But, <laughs> but Ruth. And he's out there too. And uh, I saw this when he posted it, and I was glad that he posted it into the, into the challenge this month because I, lo- I love the edit in this one in that, you know, obviously it was – it wasn't taken in a studio. I, I imagine it was not taken in a studio, probably just in his house. But he did a great job of editing everything out. You got just the – you can see the hardwood underneath the, uh, underneath the chair, the, dog, the, the black lab. I think that's what that is. Uh, I own a black lab. Sitting in the chair with his head over the, over the arm. And if there's anybody who has a simpler life than an 8-year-old boy, it is a black lab or a dog of any kind. Holy moly, they – they um, and he says yes, rough like a dog. So I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I got a name right <laughs> for once. Uh, you got to get him on the show quick. <laughs> yeah, but you know I have I own a black lab and I own a, a beagle and um, they had the simplest life. But in total, black and white image, I think fit the mood here just perfectly. If it was color, it probably wouldn't have been as as good. I don't think. Yeah, right. I think and color then, would have d- destroyed the shot. And then the editing is just very good. Uh, some of the comments, nice shot, which is very uh, pleasing. And the composition and placement are good. So I don't know why I like this image so much, but I do. <laughs> uh, the, I like how clean it is. So a lot of um, comments there. Oh, I also like the hardwood floor and the reflections underneath the chair. Nothing is more simple life than a dog lying around. Nice editing and black and white conversion. Yeah. Great job, Gordon. Rough. And <laughs> and then our last image by uh, James Etheridge, Eldridge, sorry. He's not out there in chat, so he can't lecture me. <laughs> <laughs> and this one confused me at first. I saw this one a little bit different than everybody else because I saw the hustle and bustle of a city and didn't see this, the simpleness of it until some people pointed it out to me. Um, but this one you know, is a black and white also. Um, I don't know where this is physically located, but it's – a couple like in the median between two two lane highways, so a four lane highway. They're in the median there, a small little median. And as the cars are going whizzing by, I, I'm imagining. I was trying to figure out where this picture was taken because uh, the cars are driving on the opposite sides, so it's almost like this is England or London. I was thinking Europe somewhere. I was not thinking yeah. in the U.S. Um, you know, a couple standing there and they're they're having a, a tender moment or they're, they're kissing there, um, and and there to them they're. They've isolated into the moment, and I guess that's what makes them this shot for them a simple life. Right. I, I think that's how I saw it. I mean, it really captured the essence. Uh, strong emotion in the picture, I think, is, is what I saw out of this picture. And uh, it's another one where I think if it would have been color, it would have been just an, an ordinary shot at best. Yeah. Well, you know, we often see that where black and white brings it down to the emotion of the image. You kind of lose some of that emotion of the image whenever you have, bring the color back in. You know, it, it, black and white doesn't work for everything, but when it when it does work, um, it, it 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 helps out helps by giving you just the emotion of the image and all that. So with all that, and you know, now we have the scale. So you basically you get the total number of points. It is five categories: technical, use of theme, emotion composition and then overall you add all those up and it's between one and ten points for each one of those each admin which is tim gina Sess, nikki and myself and 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 it would have been matt but he was in the final so he couldn't do it each one gets a vote and so the, i think it's a total of 250 points it was the total that somebody could have gotten per image um this month we did so this is only a second month doing it this way and 
the the number one image, and I think, heck, I think three of the images beat the total score from last month. So competition is stiff. It is this is tough. Um, and the in the number, let's see, that's four. I think the the difference between first and third was only ten points. So on a, on a percentage scale, that was eighty four percent to eighty percent. I mean, it was really tight there. Right, of the total points available, right? Yeah, but ultimately, the winner of the March photo challenge was—I knew you had it ready, <laughs> Matt Woodhouse again. <laughs> Congratulations, Matt! I would like to say that uh, a special thanks to Matt. You know, we do have a challenge whenever we have a foreign, somebody outside of the U.S. who can't use an Amazon.com gift card. They have not solved this yet. Matt said, forget about it. Don't worry about it. Um, I donate the, the funds back to JPEG to Raw to, to use in another way. And we ultimately, we're, I am never going to keep those funds. We'll just use them to do some, you know, fund other challenges or giveaways down the road. But I want to thank Matt for that. Matt, you're in no way committed to have to do that a second month. Uh, it's, it's your choice each month. And um, congratulations on winning again. Great image. And congratulations to all four of our finalists and everybody who entered. It was, it's fun watching the voting now. Yeah, I, I actually, I really like it this way. It's, it's definitely easier uh, to pick a, pick a winner and for a better reason than the one we were doing it. So and we're evolving. Yep. And it's interesting to see whenever you add up all the points. So, even it, it, looking at Matt, and, and nothing to take away from Matt, but he wasn't the winner with every person. So you no, know, it's, it wasn't. It, it's good. I I like it whenever we have such good talent in there that you have. Let me I'm gonna bring us back. You, not everybody is agreeing, and you have um, you have different people getting different votes, and so it's not a landslide. So I don't, I'm not going to say who's second, third, and all that kind of stuff. Just Everybody did really good in, in the um, in the end. So congratulations, Gordon. I love your photos of the dogs. Keep doing that, and Dean. That that shot of the kid with the fountain really you know touched me. I love that one because it brought back memories to me, of both personally and with my my kids. Um, and whoever's out, what's his, what was his name? James. James. I know you're not out there listening live, but great image with the couple and, and the traffic. We'd like to know more about that image. He probably posted it in a Facebook group so we could ask him. Uh, so when people do post out there in the challenge, don't hesitate to like them now. You know, there's no more five like limit or anything like that. You can do whatever. I do post um, out there in the forums. Have I mentioned the forums yet, Tim? No. Not today, no. So as we're getting close to the end, it's a good time for me to mention the forums again. Let me find where we have the web page here so if we go out to, to jpeg to raw then we go to forums look at that it, just a little tip if you're new in the forums anytime you come on the forums and you see one of these little little call out boxes or whatever that's not grade like this one here is not great something new posted means yes. something's new posted so since you since you were there last it remembers when the last time you were there it does right? And that was a post by somebody named Debbie. So if I come out here to the uh, to this monthly photo challenge, all entries, you can come out here and see the entries. Because now that one of the problems we have, if you're in a Facebook group but not in the, um, what do you call it, the Google Plus community, or an image comes through the, 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 show, the, the web page directly, you have all that. You don't know what all images were entered in that month's contest, unlike we used to have when we're all in the Facebook group. But I do post them all out here, and you can see, come out here, and you, you can see each one that was, um, that was uploaded into the challenge. And this one, image by Gordon Ruff. You can come through here and see each one of them. You can, you can star them or like them or whatever you want to do there. In the forums, you can see all of them that are out there. I just started this, so it's not going to have all the past information. But that's one of the things you can come out here and, and see, uh, amongst other things. And you can even comment on them below. What do you think of that, Tim? I like that. Much better than our old forums. I just have to go there more often. Much better than our old forums, isn't it? 
Yes, it is. That's that's yeah, complete change from what they were. So much easier to enter to. So speaking of that, we do have um, this giveaway we're doing with Pure Actions. Uh, Rachel uh, Reinhardt from Pure Actions. I think it's Pure Action for Photographers is the full name. She was on last week, and they're offering this action and video. We can go out there, and I think it's a fifty dollar value. I think that's what they're selling it for. All you got to do is come to this into our forums, go into I go back to there, go into the giveaways group, or what do you call that forum, and then click on the April two thousand fourteen, and then just. Com- do a what's it called a reply or a, a, what is that called reply yeah, reply Different. reply to this topic all you got to do is reply to this topic and just say like this nicholas says yes please anything <laughs> you want to say just hello um we'll see debbie just posted hope i'm not too late to enter nope you're not too late to enter uh what did i say the the timeline was on this april 26th so you have until we have 11 more days to enter Don't be late. All right. With that, I right, don't have I'm, anything I'm else. I'm entered in it now, too. <laughs> All right. When do you, we get the winner announced? So April 26th is the deadline. Let's, let's come over here. I'm going to pull this back up. We're going to go to calendar. April 26th is a uh, Saturday. I will announce the winner then on Sunday, April 27th. How's that, Gina Perry? I'll, I'll put it in my calendar after I'm done with this. Announce the winner on January, uh, not January. Did I say January, April 20, 27th? <laughs> oh, for pure. Yeah. Um, April 26th is when I'll. April 27th is when I announce it. April 26th is the last day to enter. All right. Let's go ahead and end the live show. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Uh, We actually had a good show, I think, tonight, even without a guest. Next week. Uh, I agree. I think we had a really good show today. Yeah. And I actually talked to once. (laughs) And I love it when you have the opportunity to talk. You can talk anytime you want, Tim, but I love it. Bring having you come out and talk more. Uh, From Mike Wren, who was out there earlier Tim was usually busy taking show notes, so he doesn't have as much time to take to talk. But uh, you know, Tim got to start on the show as a guest for multiple shows. Yes, I did. Yeah, so <laughs> a long time ago, a long time ago. So approaching that three-year mark soon. I know it's, it's, that's crazy. I, I appreciate you coming out every week, Tim. Uh, not a problem. Next week, just in closing, next week I will we will not be having a show. I won't be here. I will be traveling uh, on business. So. You know, no show next week. The following week, I am leaving the next day, so I'm I'm a little iffy on that day too. So keep I'll be posting. Keep in touch on our Facebook group, our Facebook page, Google Plus, or Twitter is where I'll put out all the information. Let you know when the next show is. I generally also on this page here on the live page here, put it out on the top when the next live show is, so you can see it there too. And sometimes a little bit late on that, but um, not not too late. One, I had one more thing, but I can't remember it now, so we're just going to hit and close. All right. So until next show, keep it raw, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>